Hey, six mistakes. Six mistakes that a lot of agents make. I wonder if you're making them and how to avoid them. So I'm gonna start out by letting you know from one to six what those are. And then after letting you know what those are, I'm going to explain how you can avoid them. I hate seeing these and a lot of agents make these mistakes. The first one is that they wanna know everything before they do anything. That's a bad one. When you're a new agent, you want, most people are like, I need to know everything. I wanna consume product information, right? I'm, I'm, I wanna be, you know, I, I wanna be product knowledgeable, but they, but they wanna to know too much and they use that as a crutch and excuse to not do anything, right? That's the first one, okay? The second one, not seeing enough people, pretty common, you gotta get in front of people to make money, right? Not seeing enough people, can't overcome objections or really struggle to overcome objections early in the sales process or over the phone. That's a very common one, okay? Also, not training every single day consistently. Professional athletes, they train, right? When I was playing high school basketball or college basketball, I trained and worked out and, and, and got better every single day. A lot of agents don't, okay? Also, um, trying to be great at this business part-time. Trying to be great at this business part-time is very difficult. Okay, if you're doing it right now, it's a struggle. You know, I was in college playing basketball, but I was committed to the process. And the last one, this is one of my favorites, they quit just too soon, right? There's a book out there that talks about literally five feet from gold. You ever seen that, 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 like that image of, of the person, you know, hacking away um, and then they, they quit right before they get to the diamonds. And, and, and that happens a lot with agents. So there's the top six. Now let me explain in depth on each and every one of those, the things that you can do today, this week, this month, this year, right now to avoid them. Okay, the first one again, wanting to know everything before you do anything. This is a very common mistake that agents make. It's easy in sales to think, Cody, I wanna know everything I want to be knowledgeable. I need to consume information before I go do anything. I'm telling you, those type of people struggle in sales. If that's you and you're like, I don't want to call someone. I don't want to sit down with someone. I don't want to do a presentation until I feel like I know every single thing. The chances of you succeeding are very, very slim. Okay, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is the worst one. One of the worst ones on the list and I hate it. It drives me nuts. And I, I, I do believe that I'm a natural born salesperson that could go sell a freaking Ferrari without knowing anything about it. You know, I guarantee it. And so you don't have to know everything. Like I was selling life insurance, I didn't know everything. I still don't know all the ins and outs of every little detail of life insurance, right? When it comes to product knowledge, I'm not the freaking brightest guy on the planet. But it, when it comes to selling it, making money on it, helping people with it, I'm one of the best, you know? Okay, so think about that. You don't have to know everything, before you do anything to be successful. Okay, so if that's you, let's cut that one out, all right? Because that does not have to be true. Okay, the next one. This is the, probably the biggest reason why agents fail is they do not get in front of enough people, right? If you don't see enough people, if you don't sit down with people, if you don't ask people to buy, you will absolutely fail. The only reason I had success, and I made 117 grand in my first eight months at 20 years old, the only reason is because I simply sat down and asked 10 people to buy every single week. I put the activity in. I did whatever it took to sit with the people. If you don't sit with enough people, guess what? You're not going to succeed. This is a numbers game at the end of the day. And a lot of agents struggle with sitting in front of and asking enough people to do business with them. That's the biggest reason. When you have, when you have bad weeks, I guarantee you, you sat with one, two, three, four people. And you didn't sit with more. When you have a bad week, you never, you're just not seeing them with enough people. Also, you gotta think about it. It's like, it's like me going to play a game and I'm shooting four shots the entire 48 minutes. Am I gonna be in a rhythm? Am I gonna have momentum from the last shot that I just shot, right? When I played basketball, I need to put up some freaking shots, man, right? You know, I, I need to get active, I need to get acclimated, I need to be passing the ball, playing defense, going to the rim, shooting threes, I gotta be in, involved. The same thing can be said for this business. You, most people fail because they do not sit and ask enough people to buy, they don't see enough people, is the old adage that's been here for years, okay? The third one is they struggle to overcome objections. Can't overcome objections, it's a big mistake. If, if, if that's you right now, I have my three steps that can really help that, that's agree, answer and ask. Mo it's, 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 it's human nature that people are inherently disagreeable. It's human nature that, that people are naturally combative. 
And I'm telling you, you can't be disagreeable or combative or negative or anything else to actually get good to overcome objections. The way you overcome objections is you get you use the two P's, right? Use the three A's, but you get super positive and super persistent. No matter what they say that's negative, you're positive. No matter how bad they want you to stop trying, you remain persistent. And I promise you, you remain positive and persistent no matter what they say, you will overcome whatever you want. Agree, answer, and ask. You have to be agreeable and you got to finish with a question. You need to be training on how to overcome objections. If you start getting the same objection over and over again, here's a little secret. Start getting the obje same objection over and over again. Write it down. Practice it. Role play it. Become a master of that specific objection. Also, audio recording your calls, recording your in-home appointments, all those kind of things. Can, can Recording your, 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 your dial sessions and listening back. Because I'm telling you, you're getting told stuff right now and you're not overcoming it. If I was in your shoes, I would be able to overcome it, but you're not blaming yourself. You're blaming the prospect or the lead or the vendor or the marketing or the script or whatever else you want to blame because the last thing you want to blame is you. Okay, but I promise you, you can overcome most objections that you're getting, pretty much all of them. Okay, but if you don't have that mindset, it's tougher and you're going to struggle to overcome them no matter what. Okay, the fourth one, the fourth one, agents do not consistently train enough. Okay, we've got our CA cell system now. So over 400 modules meant for individuals and teams. And it helps you plug in to an online training curriculum, a learning management system, if you will, to where you can actually plug in every single day and say, dude, I want to get better today. If that's you, then go to CodyAskins.com forward slash sales system. Or just go to CodyAskins.com and then click on the link at sales system. It's all over the website. Okay, because what you need to be doing, you need to be plugging into content, learning every single day. Every single day, you got to be getting better, right? It's a professional athlete. If, if you're a professional baseball player, you take swings literally almost every day of the week. Okay, you don't take weeks off. Maybe after the season's over, you take a couple weeks off, but then you're right back in it, right? Because you, you don't want that momentum, that repetition, and those skills to diminish over time because you're not as active and into the moment as you know you should be. Great people. Great salespeople, they train every single day. The most successful people in the world, the greatest salespeople I know, they train and they, they want to improve and they want to get better every single day. In my office, we talk about the sales system. In my office, we make our sales teams train twice a day. It is not optional, it's freaking mandatory because it's mandatory to be successful, it's mandatory to make sales, it's mandatory to make money, and if it helps you, it should be mandatory, right? If it's good enough to do it once, it's good enough to do every single day. Okay, so that's the fourth one. The fifth one, this one drives me insane. I get this question probably as much as any question I get on YouTube, right? If you're thinking about adding a question or commenting, right now's the time. Trying to win part-time. A lot of agents wanna be successful and they wanna win and, and they wanna do it part-time. The problem is you can't have a full-time committed mindset when you're part-time. You can't be fully committed and dominated in anything when you're doing it part-time. You say, well, Cody, you did it part-time. Well, but I put in a full-time amount of hours, even though I was playing basketball and going to school. I would be at the office till 11 o'clock at night, turning in applications. I would go up door knocking at eight, nine o'clock on a Saturday. I would go in and cold call from two to six on a Sunday, right? I put in the work, even though I didn't put in the even though I didn't put in office hours per se, it doesn't mean I didn't, I wasn't fully committed, fully focused and, and really putting in the time and full-time focus, right? It's part-time focus versus full-time focus. If you have part-time focus, you will get part-time results. If you have a full-time focus and you're fully committed, guess what? You may get some full-time freaking results and that's what you want. I'm telling you, it's a mindset shift. It's a mindset shift. You have to be committed. Tr quit trying to be part-time. Okay, quit trying to be part-time. Part-time means I will try it. We don't try nothing, man. That's a mindset problem. Anything I try to do, I fail at. Anything I commit to doing and actually doing well, I do well. Okay, but when I try to do stuff, I, I tend not to do well because I'm trying instead of really doing. Okay, so the last one, this one drives, this one, this one's crazy, this one drives me nuts, is that people quit five feet from gold. They're so close to finding the freaking diamond in the rough, right? The, the gold in the mine, they're right there, and then they quit just barely too soon. There's an image of a guy chipping away at an ax through this dirt underground, and, he, and he, he's so close. He just keeps going and keeps going. He's like, man, I'm almost there. I'm almost there, and he gets there, 
He's, he's so tired, he's exhausted. He's one foot from all these diamonds. He doesn't know it. Huge cave full of diamonds. He has no idea. He quits, gives up, goes home. I don't want that to be you. Hey, if you love this video, you're cutting out the mistakes, but you're like, dude, I want to spend some dough, man. I'm committed. I'm ready. What should I spend money on? Are you spending money on stuff you shouldn't be? I'm going to answer that question right there. See you over there. Hey, there's a big question that I hear a lot on our YouTube channel and comments, and that's how to spend money. How should I invest? What should I do? What should I have? As an insurance agent, to really get